Next up is the story of Engstrom Materials. They are the leading producer of graphene in the world. So if you're asking yourself, what exactly is graphene? Well, it's a revolutionary product that is changing many industries for the better. Dayton, Ohio is in America's heartland. It's here that we find one of the most innovative technologies of our time and meet the team of brilliant scientists and engineers behind Angstrom Materials. Inside this 22,000 square foot facility, they produce graphene, a nano-sized material with the ability to reshape and innovate technologies and enhance some of the world's most important industries. Well, graphene is a two-dimensional material that's composed of uh, carbon atoms arranged in a hexag hexagonal pattern. And the graphene is a uh, very unique material because it has uh, a range of properties that cannot be found in other materials all, all at once. Under a microscope, graphene looks a lot like everyday chicken wire. And it's this six-sided shape that gives the material its extraordinary properties. Graphene is 100 times stronger than steel and conducts electricity and heat better than most materials. This means it moves electricity and heat more efficiently from one place to another. Graphene was a lab-scale curiosity, produced only in very small quantities. But thanks to innovators like Dr. Bor Jang, it's available and affordable, and Angstrom is producing more than anyone else in the world. Um, I decided to, uh, to develop graphene technology to the stage that they, can, they could become uh, commercialized, to become a useful material in the market. And so back in 2007, after five, six years of effort in, in the development of graphene, I asked one of my former colleagues, Dr. Aruna Zamu, to co-found Engstrom material with me. And so we, uh, we were the first one really uh, to uh, commercialize the graphene materials. So we, we were the first one to enter the market in mass quantities. As we've gone through the years, last seven years, we've really been able to scale up our production of graphene. We're currently at approximately 300 metric tons a year. So a lot of times you'll hear people talking about um, graphene as this great material, but it's too expensive for a lot of applications. What we are really trying to do is take that notion and shift it over saying, yes, we can mass produce graphene. We can mass produce it at a cost and at a scale that is suitable for a lot of applications. Angstrom is at the forefront of graphene applications and their creative team is constantly considering how to innovate other technologies with graphene. While we were originally founded to mass produce the graphene, we are now shifting into uh, two different directions. On one hand, we're still mass producing the raw materials. On the other, we're taking it a step farther and taking that graphene material that we have and incorporating it into real world um, devices, real world applications. One area the team at Angstrom Materials is excited about is alternative energy. They are currently working to create a better battery for electric vehicles. In China alone, uh, they produce 35 million electrical bikes a year. And then, right, unfortunately, 80% of the battery used in those electrical bikes are still lead exit battery. The production of lead exit battery can be, can be bad to the environment because it's, um, I mean, lead is not a very desirable element for the environment. Lead acid has been around for a long time, very well known um, and used in a lot of applications, but it's very big, very heavy, can't store much energy inside a lead acid battery. So lithium ion batteries are really trying to replace the lead acid and graphene plays a, can play a key role in that. If you think of a lead acid battery that um, stores a certain amount of energy, you can reduce the size and the weight six to eight times um, by using a graphene enhanced lithium ion battery. Energy storage isn't the only technological advancement that Angstrom Materials is working on. Engineers are constantly finding new ways to incorporate this incredible material into everyday products. So my background is in material science. Working in graphene for material scientists is like winning the lottery. So basically, I have this job and I won the lottery and I come in in the morning and I work with graphene and they pay me to do it. 
And this is the greatest. And this is potentially the world's largest block of graphene. One of Claire's specialties is using the thermal management properties of graphene to help control the heat generated by electronics. The cooler the operating temperature of your computer, tablet, or smartphone, the better it runs. One outcome of the continuous miniaturization of electronics is the need for enhanced thermal management because you have a lot of circuits. You're packing them very close together. You're designing them to be miniaturized and now you have heat that you need to dissipate in order for the electronics to work correctly. That is really one of the major strengths of graphene and major opportunities for graphene. For thousands of years, humans have been crafting the elements of the earth to shape the tools and technologies that make up our world. Now graphene is getting its chance to shine and as a relatively new technology, is just beginning to realize its potential in manufacturing applications. Any one of the team members at Angstrom Materials can give you dozens of ways graphene will change the technology of the future. You just need bright minds to help get you there. So you talk about other industries that have been developed over decades between um, first invention to um, widespread adoption. Graphene has been around for just over 10 years now and we are rapidly approaching that commercialization stage. Um, so it's very, certainly very exciting in terms of being able to work on something on applications and on um, devices that have never been tried before. Um, it's certainly an area of interest and 